well it turns out that one of the challenges you know we are slowly i think as i said photonics we are slowly moving into the quantum regime in the quantum regime we are interested in actually controlling photons and emitting photons on demand and we want to emit what are known as single photons we will talk about it in the next four weeks we'll understand the more details about it but once you have a cavity like this uh, once you have a assist, uh, systems like this you know wherein either you know we can control how the emission happens we have we can in principle transmit quantum bits and that's the holy grail that's why we are going towards it we are understanding uh, these fundamental aspects in greater detail okay and my goal in this course is to expose you to do that okay all right so i'll show you one example of how this happens okay so hopefully this will make a little bit more clearer so this is a problem that i have taken from mark fox's book the reference is given there so now what they are saying is here you have a semiconductor quantum dot which emits at 900 nanometers wavelength okay and it has a radiative lifetime of 1.3 nanoseconds the dot is placed in a gallium masonite micro cavity of refractive index something and then modal volume something and q is something okay calculate the lifetime in the cavity now this is a cavity having small volume and actually having a high q factor what do you expect will happen to the lifetime the lifetime is originally 1.3 nanoseconds what will be the new lifetime increases decreases or equal so now what i'm doing is if i have a individual quantum dot right a semiconductor quantum dot it has a lifetime of 1.3 nanoseconds now i'm putting that inside a cavity okay i said the cavity is consisting of in the pre in the previous case i said cavity is mirrors right in this experiment what happened is they have constructed uh two mirrors these two mirrors are called what are known as dbrs dbr mirror that means simply these are a stack of alternating refractive indices okay we designed the photonic crystal right in the in the week 5 wherein we talked about these alternating layers of different refractive indices and by choosing the appropriate appropriate thickness and the wavelength we can see that at certain points you can have very high reflectivity so that is called a distributed bragg reflect mirror so basically you have reflectivity because of this stack on the top you have one this constitutes one mirror this constitutes another mirror instead of this you know in the traditional cavities this used to be millimeter size or even centimeters okay now we have miniaturized this the mirror is basically top mirror small mirror uh, bottom mirror m1 m2 in between them we have placed a quantum dot okay now what do you think will happen to the lifetime of the quantum dot ideally because this mirror has a very high uh, cavity has a high q and relatively small volume so it should actually become faster right so how much faster will it be well that will depend on the parcel factor right so what is the parcel factor fp fp we said was uh, 3q lambda by n whole q divided by 4 pi square and some volume v not okay so i can substitute now so now basically my 3 into q factor is 2000 for this cavity i mean okay this is not the example but yeah so for in the example problem you are given 2000 and then lambda is 900 into 10 power minus 9 divided by refractive index which is 3.5 whole cube divided by 4 pi square into volume is 1 into 10 power minus 19 if you calculate this i think this will turn out to be about 2.26 or something like that okay we can estimate these numbers So now, what will happen to my lifetime in the cavity? The radiative lifetime, if I call it tau, tau in the cavity is going to be 1.3 nanoseconds divided by. We know the lifetime is going to be 1.3 nanoseconds divided by 26. Okay, that will be some number. 1300, 1300 divided by 25. So five times something 50 picoseconds. Okay, something like that, approximately. Okay. So from 1.3 nanoseconds, we have made the spontaneous emission much faster. How do we know this? Is it really occurring? Well, this is experimentally studied. What you see is on resonance. Light, I mean, this is a different example. Uh, different example, but what you see is if you have the reflection, the resonant frequency, non-res off resonant frequency, you have a lifetime of 1.7, 1.1 nanoseconds here. Sorry, uh, this which I wanted to be highlight. <coughs> off resonance you see 1.1 nanoseconds on resonance 0.25 nanoseconds that means the quantum dot is now behaving differently it's emitting much faster so this this is what i call as you know fluorescence lifetime measurement wherein 
as a function of time you look at the fluorescence fluorescence is a signature of an excited state how fast is it spontaneously emitting is captured by the fluorescence so previously you have seen the wavelength in the wavelength you know how the fluorescence is changing now this is in time you know in picoseconds you are capturing so if you look at this from here to here 1 over e is the lifetime by fitting that they have calculated that of resonance the lifetime is 1.1 nanoseconds on the resonance the lifetime is 0.25 nanoseconds all right so this is how the the cavity is influencing the emitter okay this is called as parcel effect and this is very very routinely used nowadays you know if if you have I any mean, if you search for parcel effect nanophotonics i think you'll find hundreds and thousands of papers on this okay so i just wanted to introduce you to that now this is also you know it might seem you know uh, i mean what is the current thing is it useful well it turns out that this effects are very very you know uh, seriously being explored to create what are known as single photon sources okay uh, that's very important for quantum you know we, as i said our you know we are evolving towards a quantum re, uh, quantum uh, information regime wherein we want to transmit quantum information so in that we want to create singlet fo single photon sources what is a single photon and all that i will talk about it in the next few uh, weeks okay but we want to talk about single photon sources so in that if you want to create these sources we want to actually control this so this is an experiment wherein a quantum dot here a quantum dot is placed in the center of a photonic crystal so i have shown you images you know where you can have different holes like this can actually create photonic crystals right a 2d photonic crystal so if you have a photonic crystal like this you can have a quantum dot in the center of it and then now what will happen based on the previous situation we can immediately infer that the lifetime reduces and that is what is shown on the right side here so if you have a bulk quantum dot without any cavity and anything you have a large lifetime this is again delayed time right how the lifetime is changing with the fluorescence intensity so as you see, without anything you have actually large uh, lifetime but the moment you put it on the cavity non resonantly you have this blue color uh, at resonance you have actually much much sharper uh, decay rate okay so basically the decay is much much faster if you are able to make a quantum dot emit very very fast then you can actually create single photons okay or at least approach the single photon regime okay and for that this particular experiment i have taken it for you know four years back 2018 okay and if you look at the paper there will be things like you know they'll say that oh we have used pi pulse excitation okay excitation why should i use pi pulse excitation so we talked about the rabi flopping right last time rabi frequency so basically you can create a population in the higher state and the lower state if you apply a pi pulse that means a pulse of certain width so that the entire population or you know most of the population goes to the excited state that's when you have the fluorescence maximum if you apply two pi pulse you will reset it you will go to zero again okay so the emission will be reset so by applying a pi pulse excitation they have done this and they have also used a cavity q factor of I think this is a photonic crystal the q factor i think something between 500 to 700 if i if i remember the data correctly and they also have a very small modal volume here you know some modal volume of something okay it should be in the order of some lambda by n whole cube okay so it's a very small cavity so they are able to study that okay there's a lot of interesting things and if you are working in nanophotonics i think if you want to understand the current literature some of these things are essential and that's why i'm introducing this All right so this is one example of how parcel effect can be useful the other regime that we talked about is equally fascinating that is equally you know counter intuitive i would say we talked about when g not is much much greater than kappa or gamma the cavity decay rate or the non resonant decay rate right and this happens this is strong coupling is what we said what is the meaning of this okay so we will not go into the lot of details about it because there are some concepts i think we have to introduce and that becomes uh, too much of an overload so what i'll show you in experiment okay experiment is signature of what happens when you have strong coupling so now look at a cavity okay consider a cavity consisting of two mirrors like this okay and then i shine a light here through the cavity okay this particular experiment the cavity resonant wavelength was tuned to so that you know the omega not of the cavity is basically okay if i <laughs> maybe i should yeah i mean i can call it omega not or, so, or lambda not whatever okay it has basically okay you will understand now anyway right omega not the freak, the wavelength is 589 nanometers okay you tune the cavity in such a way that the resonance wavelength resonance occurs at 589 nanometers okay now if you take a probe laser and scan it let's say go from slightly smaller than maybe 570 nanometers to 
let's say uh, 590 nanometers or 610 nanometers you scan the wavelengths through the cavity what will you see well we know that the cavity exhibits a transmission of one right whenever it matches the resonance so if i if i can have a situation i scan my laser then i'll see that at the resonant wavelength you'll get a peak okay this peak is what is shown in the top picture here now in addition to this we introduce some sodium atoms okay sodium atoms have a characteristic line at 589 nanometers now when the sodium atoms are introduced something very interesting happens okay now the atom hybridizes with the cavity the cavity has a resonant wavelength of 589 nanometers the atom also has the sodium atoms have this is let's say cavity okay now we also have omega naught of uh, sodium atom right same i mean these are carefully chosen for to actually identic be identical now when these two interact very strongly okay we said the interaction parameter is g naught and we can create scenarios where the g naught is stronger than decay rate and so on okay if you do that what will happen you can say that they'll hybridize or they'll interact very strongly and you get resultant you know two states which is omega minus and omega plus splitting of energy levels into two due to strong coupling okay when you have this splitting uh basically the atom and the cavity interact and the energy levels now are split into two okay so now effectively now the cavity behaves as a hybrid system okay so hybrid cavity and uh, atom system what is the signature of uh, the splitting happening well now you pass the probe beam i mean probe beam has a very small intensity you look at the transmission now instead of one transmission you see two transmission peaks okay so this basically now no the cavity is no longer working as original unperturbed cavity but now it's strongly coupled to the atoms and because of which now there are two transmission peaks that occur in the cavity okay this i mean even the number of photons become important in this particular case this is no photons so no sorry no no sodium atoms not photons no sodium atoms here in this case there are 200 sodium atoms well it also plays a important role we'll we'll talk about it after we discuss quantum optics okay so right now i just want to tell you that whatever you think is a cavity you des- you design it in everything right but even that can be tuned sometimes by introducing additional elements like sodium in this case all right so and this is experimentally observed okay so uh, there are a lot of interesting things like this and you know to give another example of strong coupling this is a paper maybe you know 5 years back so uh, there are a lot of a lot of information here essentially what they have taken is taken a dye molecule on a gold film like this you know you have a gold film there's a dye molecule the thickness of the dye film is very very small 0.9 nanometers and top of that they placed a gold nanoparticle okay and they studied how the scattering occurs from the nanoparticle now if you look at the strong coupling what were the two conditions for strong coupling strong coupling means g not should be greater than gamma or k kappa right so when will this be greater you can have high q or small volume okay small volume so if you have let's say the old you know dielectric nanosphere whispering gallery modes i mentioned a couple of times they have very very large q okay so they c- come somewhere here in this is you no know, quality factor versus the volume graph the quality factor is going to be large and the volume is going to be large and they can be observed you know the strong coupling can happen but you can also think of photonic crystals where have moderate q factors and moderate volumes but if you have plasmonic structures we saw that light can be confined to very very small volumes in this case light will be very strongly confined to gap region here so that's what is electric field intensity is shown here so it's very con- uh, strongly confined to this 0.9 nanometers very small confinement is giving you a small volume of cavity of course the q factor of these things is never really large plasmonics we saw that the resonance is broad so the q factor is you know small here but even then we are able to actually observe strong coupling what is the signature of strong coupling the signature of strong coupling is such that when you have the dye excited in such a way that it's you know uh, in one scenario you have the single peak now um, there are some details i'm skipping here 
but essentially you have you know when the cavity mode is not excited it's not interacting you'll get a single peak but when the dye and the cavity interact you end up getting two peaks like this okay and this is what is characteristically called as anti crossing so if you plot this uh, this is a bit of more information basically frequency versus en energy versus this parameter space you will see that at some point you see the anti crossing instead of ideally the cavity and the dye will actually have the same wavelength but you saw that that will split and that will give you this sort of a behavior where you know omega is going like this and like this but it not interact so this is called as anti crossing behavior the bands will never cross okay it's, it's a bit of too much thing but essentially i want you to take home this message that you will have the splitting of energy levels the even here the the plasmonic antenna coupled to a gold fin you know, this is a cavity a cavity interacts with an atom now the way that it scatters is different the system itself behaves differently as if it has two peaks okay so this is a strong coupling regime which is very very useful when controlling the light matter interaction in the nano scale all right so with that uh, any questions okay so with that i'll close this discussion so i think i have uh, covered a lot of what i wanted to cover i have introduced you to uh this one the question is okay all this is very interesting it looks very esoteric and you know very fundamental so what is the take away message the take away message is in goes back to my introduction video we have all this technology that has been the you know you know the semiconductor technology essentially drove the entire revolution in computing and all that right now we are reaching the limits of it now we have to come up with new radical ways of actually continuing the progress and in one of the way one of the important directions is basically towards quantum quantum information processing and all that or even the photonic you know nano scale photonic phenomena when can you control those nano scale optical phenomena or even quantum nature one of the candidates for quantum computing i said is photons so if you want to control the quantum state of a photon that is emitted i have to really control the state at which my photon is emitting it's whether it's emitting in a, you know a large number of photons or small number of photons i want to deterministically control and that control can only come from understanding all these fundamental ideas that we are talking about so uh, if you ask me uh, can i build a uh, box out of it and sell it tomorrow no you can't but this is where the the research frontier is so uh, in typically at least in my view research uh you can do many things uh, sometimes you know a lot of people are interested in doing application oriented research and that is very important but but you know we should also understand the fundamentals very well if you understand the fundamentals very well we understand that certain things cannot be done or can be done we have to have the deep insight which comes only by go going and understanding the fundamentals and so it's been my endeavor in this course you know that's why i call it fundamentals of nano and quantum photonics so how does light behave nano scale and the quantum scale, uh, phenomena right when we inter when we understand we can think of newer applications and these are applications that probably are not invented now entirely there are some ideas people are pursuing but it is like you know as i said in the introduction you know we are thinking about a regime where you know let's say if you are in the electronics world and you are in 1960s a mosfet was just invented if somebody asked you oh, what is the use of this you can't even conceive that you can put 100 you know uh, 10 billion of those transistors together on a chip nobody could have done that 60 years back so i think one part of the knowledge should always be focused on pushing the frontiers you should understand what is happening at the frontiers you may not be able to do it all of it it's okay none of us can but we should at least experience that and because we get new ideas so a lot of times in research you have this cross pollination of ideas from various different streams so as a last last lecture i said about ravi flipping ravi ravi frequency right you have in optics you use it in nmr use it in various different things wherever two level systems are there similarly some of these things can be you know cross uh, pollinated into different areas so that's why it's useful to learn about it okay at least understand them at a high level if not actually do it if you are of course doing research in this direction you have to understand the details but that comes later as a beginner you would, if you are exposed to it that's amazing all right so yeah so with that i will talk, i will i'll just stop this discussion on the all the nanophotonics part uh, in the rest of the week you know i have maybe you know another half an hour one hour i'll take some time and actually try to explain some elements of fabrication so that you get some idea we have shown all this nanophotonic structure so i'll just briefly tell you about fabrication and i'll still link it up to photonic ideas that nanophotonics ideas that we have studied once i do that i'll stop 
and from next week we'll continue with the quantum description all right the next four weeks will be on that all right so yeah thank you so much i'll see you in the next lecture bye